Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to allow a user to search for a recipe whether or not they're currently using the Contoso Cookbook app. So just to kind of see this in action, and to make, first of all, let's make sure we're on the same page here. We're in lab number three, exercise two, add recipe search, and we're looking at invoke the search charm. And so the first task is just to reinforce the idea that we currently don't have search implemented in our app. So it just says run the app and then invoke the search charm and then start typing something like sugar and first of all we see this little indicator this app can't be searched so even if we attempt to do it we're not going to get any results alright and so what we need to do is implement search and the way you implement search in a, uh, in a Windows Store app is very simple actually. Uh, let's follow the instructions here. It basically says that we want to add a new item. We're going to call the new search contract item search results page. So let's do that. I'm going to right click on the project and select add new item and from the items I'm going to select a search contract and so we're going to call this search results page. I'll just get rid of the one. Dot XAML and click add. And so this search contract template makes it easy to create a search results XAML page consistent with the look and the feel of all Windows Store apps. It's also going to allow the user to filter the results by group name. And we're going to see how to wire all that and get that working as well. So unlike the previous lesson where we had to manually write code in the load state method of the page that we wanted to enable sharing inside of, this time to enable search across our entire app we merely needed to add this search contract page. Doing so will automatically update the app manifest with the appropriate declarations to notify Windows that your app now supports this contract. So let's just follow along here and take a look at the remainder of the uh, instructions. The first thing that it wants us to do is to change uh, the page.resources and give it a new name. Let's not use app name. Instead, it says let's use the word search. Easy enough. Next up, we want to add an item equals on item click attribute to the grid view named results grid view and to the list view named results list view. All right. So let's go ahead and add something and we're going to name it just because I want to remember this on item click. So let's go item click. and I'm going to paste in the name of that method and I'm going to do the same thing here in this list view as well. And then just to make sure we have it right, I'm going to navigate to the event handler. All right, there we go. Very good. And so the next thing that we want to do is add the following method to the search results page class to navigate to the recipe. Da, da, da. Okay, we've already done that, so I'm just going to copy out the bits that I need here. Control C, and I'm going to paste them here. All right, so this will navigate to the page showing the recipe that was clicked. All right, and you can see that the next instruction is that we want to add this using statement because the recipe data item is not recognized at the moment. So we can do it one of two ways. I can either copy and paste it or we know the old trick, right? It has a little blue line underneath the R in recipe and I can just click click it, get the drop down arrow and we can add the using statement automatically and that seems to do the same thing. Great. And let me just take a brief aside here. Remember that we talked about this second parameter of the frame.navigate method. Well, you can pass in a navigation parameter. Now in this case, we're passing the unique ID from an instance of recipe data item, the instance that the user clicked on from the search results page. This is a very pliable way to send objects or collections of objects between pages in your app. Now in this case we're simply grabbing the item that was clicked on uh, that was passed into this event handler, namely this item click event args E, and then grabbing the item from its clicked item property and that property will be sent out as an object and so we're going to need to cast that to the strong type recipe data item. 
then we grab off the unique ID, which is just probably like an int, I can't remember. But you can pass anything here, not just simple types. And like I said, I've used this to pass objects and collections and have even created special classes that contain just the data that I need to pass. Kind of like a navigation model, similar to a view model, but it's just the data that I need to pass from one page to the next. Next up, we want to add the following field to the search results page class. So we're going to create a private member called results. It is of type, it's a dictionary. Uh, so given a key of type string and a value of type list of recipe data items. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. Put that at the very top of our search results page.xaml.cs. So we'll put it right here. And so this is a collection of recipe data item collections representing the search results. Okay. And so the next thing then is that we want to, um, I guess, populate that. So we're going to grab this code and we're going to place it before the comment that reads communicate the results through the view model in the load state. So we're going to place it right here. And you can see we are modifying this filter list. The filters will be things like all items or any of the individual groups like Chinese, French, and so on. Okay, and it gives you a nice note to explain how this works here. And just to kind of clarify here, what's going to happen is we're going to look through every group and then look at the items inside of every group. And for each item, we're going to see if it contains if the title or the directions contain the word that we're searching for, sugar or whatever we type in. And if it does contain it, then we want to add those to all items. So in the all category, we're going to add, add the given item that we found. And also we're going to add it to this items collection that will get, that will be used to show how many items uh, that match the criteria were found in a given group. Okay. All right. And then it says find the filter selection change method and add the following statement to the if clause right after the to do. So let's look for this. The filter selection changed. Here we are. And right after the if statement, let's make sure we have the right place here right after the to do respond to the change. All right, so I guess it wants it right there. Okay, so what's the meaning of this? Well, here we're just populating the default view model. We know what that is, right? And we're going to put into it the results that we've captured that will contain each of the groups, the group titles and the items that belong to, uh, to that group that meets the uh, search criteria. And then it wants us to modify the standard styles in the common folder. And we're looking for this standard small icon 300 by 70 item template. All right, so let's see where that's actually being used. If I were to go to the grid view, you can see that it's the item template for the grid view that displays the results. So we know how to navigate to that easily, right? We're going to go to miscellaneous, find the item template, and go to its source. And the instructions are to, actually there's several here. We want to remove the text block that has the subtitle property and change the width and the height of the border and bind the first text block's text property to short rather than title. Well, we could go and make all those changes individually, but let's just go ahead and copy all this code because it didn't give us the specifics of the values that it wanted us to change. And it would just be easier to go ahead and, and to um, make those changes wholesale. And so I'm just going to highlight that code, delete it, and then paste in their code with the changes. All right. So now we're using short title and uh, the, uh, the 
the border will be different and so on. All right, and so that's all we need to do at this point to get this working. Let's go ahead and run the app. And uh, let's go ahead and bring up the search charm. And you can see now, instead of the fact that it can't search, it says Contoso Cookbook is where the context that we're searching in. And I'm gonna type in the word sugar and hit enter on the keyboard. And we can see that we find all items. There are five and then also uh, the, uh, the groupings. We see the number that are Chinese, French, Italian, and so on. So we can filter by those. Very cool. Okay. Now before we move on and complete uh, exercise, or task number three rather, uh, I want to take a quick look at the package.appx manifest from very early on. And this time I want to open the declarations tab and I want to point out that we see under supported declarations, search has been added on the left-hand side under supported declarations. Uh, this tells Windows to go ahead and, our, and uh, our app can handle the search charm whenever it's selected by the user. Uh, not only that, but in the app.xaml.cs, if you take a look, there's now an on search activated uh, method that's been added, uh, which will direct any search requests to that new search contract page using that frame.navigate to the search results page. So that's how the search results.page.xaml will be brought up whenever a search is performed. It's because our the application object, our instance of the application object, know, has an on search activated uh, event handler now. And it directs all search traffic then to our search results page. That's pretty cool. And we got all of that just by including that search contract from the add new items dialog. All right, so let's continue on into task number three. Uh, and now we're going to add search suggestions so that as the user is typing in the search window um, and the, when the search charm uh, window flies out, uh, it will give us some, some spelling suggestions. All right, so to enable this, the first thing we're going to do, you can see here, is add uh, this using statement to the app.xaml.cs for application model.search namespace. All right, easy enough. The next step is to uh, add the following statements at the beginning of the onLaunched method right after the call to the load local data async. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and find onLaunched and then look for right after the call to load local data async. Okay. So now we're red. This is uh, register a handler for the suggestions requested events uh, from the search pane. Okay, cool. And so you can see that it can't find this event handler, and that's what we're going to implement next. So let's just copy the on suggestions requested event handler, and we'll place it right here. And so as you can see, uh, whenever the user starts typing into the search pane, it, our app can now handle the suggestions requested event, and we can start providing options. Here we have an array of strings that we supply with different you know, strings that we can type in. If any of those terms start with the letters that have already been typed into the uh, into the search box. And if so, then we want to append that query suggestion to the list of query suggestions that the user sees in the search box, okay? And so it asks us to go ahead and start and we'll type in 
start typing sugar and see what we see. Okay, so here we are. Let's go and get the search charm opened up. And now I'm going to type SU, and you can see it gives us search suggestions. That is a very neat feature, and it cost us very little to implement that. Okay, uh, and it would be easy for us to just uh, take an existing list uh, or observable collection of items that we already have, and instead of using that hard coded array of strings that we saw, uh, to just supply that instead, and so we could provide many more suggestions. Uh, and I. I'm hoping to use this extensively on an app that I'm building. I'm very excited about that feature. There's one thing left to do. Uh, you know, up to this point, we've gotten our search to work only inside of our app. However, what if we wanted a user to allow a user to search from any app, uh, but search inside of our Contoso cookbook app? So if we take a look, there's a note here that explains that if our app isn't currently running and the user types in a search and then clicks our app's name and icon in the search charm, then we'll need to launch our app and immediately display the search page and perform the search. So that's what we're going to do right now. So open up the app.xaml.cs and find the on search activated event. So we're already there and let's look for on search activated. And then we want to add the following statements to the beginning of that method. And so let's copy them and paste them and then take a look. So I'm going to put them right here under this to do statement. So the very first thing that we're doing here is making sure that we understand what was the previous execution state. I'm not ready to talk about the process lifecycle of a Windows 8 app just yet. That lab is coming soon. But essentially, if the app was not already running or it's been terminated, then the first thing we need to do is load up our data. So we're calling load local data async, which goes to the hard drive, grabs out uh, all the recipe data, pulls it into memory. All right, and then it will add an event handler to the on suggestions requested, the part that we just finished in the previous lesson that will give us the um, the list of suggestions. Okay, and I can't see it here, but it's here somewhere. All right. And so here's what we want to do. Um, we want to we want to make sure that our Contoso cookbook is not running. So I'm just going to right click in the in the Windows bar, the task bar, and I'm going to bring up task manager. And I'm going to make sure that it's not currently running. And I see that it's not, so that's good. And then we want to go to the start screen and uh, display the charms. And then we're going to start typing sugar. All right. So here we are bringing up the search charm. And we're going to start typing sugar. All right. And I'm going to go down to the Contoso cookbook with the arrow key, uh, keys on my keyboard. I'm going to hit the enter key on my keyboard. And so if you don't get the results you expect, I would encourage you not to panic. First, we're going to try rebuilding the app. It's possible that we're working with an older version of the app prior to implementing the new search functionality. If that doesn't work, then begin to look at the code that you added. Now, in our case, we have the luxury of comparing that code against instructions. But if you're working on your own app, you may want to set breakpoints or do what I suggested earlier in this series and just stare at the code and make sure it's doing what you intended for it to do. Bring up the search, type in sugar, and go to Contoso Cookbook. And we can now see the results, everything that has sugar, and we can then narrow it down as well. Very cool. Okay, so now the users of our app can search for recipes directly from the search charm with, without having to open up our app first. That's awesome. So next we're going to enhance our app with using more features like camera integration and the app bar. So uh, we finished another lab. We're becoming uh, increasingly integrated with Windows 8 and it's awesome. So let's keep pushing ahead. We'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.